Hi there, and welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. I'm your host, Kamaria Richmond, and we have a fabulous, exciting show for you today. We are talking to, and I'm going to try and get it right, Dujon Chemont, our guest known as Du. Now, pronounce your name for me in case I pronounced it wrong. It's uh, Duji Chemont. Duji Chemont. Okay. Nice. We're going to call him the artist Du, and he is actually going to give us a um, Show us how he does it, but let's start with this, Do When did you start painting? I started painting when I was uh, very, very young. Okay. As soon as I, was, you know, I started breathing, really. And um, I've been doing it for about uh, my entire life, really. Never really dropped it, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. Wow, and you are very, you look so young, but you are the ripe age of? Uh, I'm 21 years old. <laughs> and so he, you can see how young he looks. So he's been doing this a very long time. And we'll kind of just talk throughout the interview, but mm -hmm. you're going to show us what you started working on today. Right. So tell us about this piece that you're working on. So this piece that I'm working on right now, it's, um, I don't really have a title for it yet. Okay. But. Right now, what it's, what it's supposed to be before I start adding any, you know, details to it. It's, to, it's a couple. It's a male and a woman. And they are in a garden. And the garden is not no ordinary garden. It's similar to that of the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. but it's the Garden of Time. And rather than having plants, you have mushrooms and different plants that have a clock as a fruit, mm -hmm. you know. And there's plenty of these things. There's like one here, there's another one here, and the small hourglass that are plants as well. And they are standing in in this field, right? This is uh, this garden of time. And this young man, he has his heart out like this. As a young lady, like kind of take energy from that. Okay. And that's why you have the battery life on top of their heads. Now she is being charged up through his love. Interesting, now where did that concept come from? Where I say it's from? A inspiration from life. Interesting, interesting. And now, how, how do you paint? Mm. Well, I could show you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so I have um, a paintbrush, and I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I have a, uh, a cup holder on the floor. It's called a paint puck, okay. created by my good friend. And, um, but yeah, so what I do is I would uh, kind of mix the paint. Right now I'm about to use the color blue for the shirt. And I would start with the lightest. They say that you start with the darkest, you can. Okay. But I start with the lightest, you know. And you kind of go lightly. You don't gotta fight it, you know. And if y'all familiar with uh, Bob Ross, I kind of watch him a lot too. Okay. He's one of my now, when did, you, when did you start? What was it about painting that you said, okay, this is something I think I want to do or I can do? Mm. What drew you to, to painting? Well, I've had, I, had, I have a, an, an uncle, right? And he's, he's an artist as well. Mm -hmm. And his name is uh, Edwin Sharma. And he was very big in Haiti at the time. Okay. And he... Uh, he used to carry canvases of paintings like all the time into his house, and his house was like two doors from mine. And I would just see him walk like in front of the, because uh, there we had a little, uh, was that a patio, I believe, or a mm -hmm. porch. Okay. I would sit on the porch, you know, playing and doodling, and I would just see him carry these big canvases with like magnificent paintings on them. Like, wow. And I asked him, uh, you know, to teach me one day. I was around like four, and he sat with me, gave me a sheet of paper, and showed me how to draw a face. And I've been drawing that same face for the past 17 years, maybe. Wow. And I just add my own to it and, you know, and kind of learn and grow from mm. that scenario. Okay. What's your, what's your art philosophy as, mm. an, as an artist? What is your philosophy on how and why you paint and, and what it means? Hmm. I'd say, as if I don't, my philosophy, right, I believe that especially if you go to a museum, I, I don't see too many faces that look like myself. Mm -hmm. Especially if I were to go to a big time museum like National you know, Gallery. And like, especially when you walk towards the historical parts of the, the art, 
it's a lot of, um, you know, I don't see a lot of representation, you know? Okay. So, and when I do see representation, it's people with shackles and different things that are shocking. Well, I guess it's a part of history, but I want to portray my own history, and because history is being created and recreated, and it repeats itself right. as well, but in different manners, you know. So, I my job as a, as an artist is to capture that and portray it the way I see, mm -hmm. and it's like you're looking at life, but through my perspective. Right, right. And now you also teach art. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that. Well, I used to teach uh, at this uh, at this school called um, Jason R Elementary, and it's in Southeast DC. Okay. And I used to taught um, third to fifth, and they were they were lovely. And it's funny because I went to visit them yesterday, and um, one of the kids told me to welcome home because I haven't been there in a while. Oh, that's but, um, so sweet. Yeah, it was it was very cool. Well, I've always wanted to paint, and, and I'll, let you, I'll let you work as well. Mm, sure. uh, I've done some sip and paints. I've done two of those. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing seems like, I just thought, oh, okay, you just put some paint and just go in any direction you want to go in. But it actually takes a couple of colors to make one color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a lot uh, trickier, a lot challenging that it looks. And I know color is big for you. So why did you choose to use the, the blue and the white? Hmm. Well, for st it's the image, it's the color that, because uh, I'm painting from a reference picture. Okay. And this is the, the, in the image, uh, the reference for the male had blue. He had a blue shirt on. But blue is more so a very calm color. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like the sky, it's very calm and giving. You know, it's very um, relaxing, I'd say. Not too gloomy, not too happy either. Just very chill. Yeah, as I'm watching you use the blue, I mean, it feels, it actually feels calming. Mm. Watching you do it, the energy actually is, is there. Mm, I'm glad and you feel that way. So you do murals and you do portraits and what other type of uh, work do you do? Well, I um, I design clothes as well, and um, I do illustrations. I'm working on a couple illustrations for books right now. Okay. I've been working on one uh, for quite some time now. Kind of got lazy with it actually, but. It's going well, though. Mm -hmm. And what are the illustrations? I think I was reading online. Did you do something for a children's book? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, too. OK. Yeah. OK, and what was the name of it? It's called um, The Skunk. Skunk. Yeah. Very cool. And what advice do you have for young people? Well, I shouldn't even say young people. Mm. For any of us that want to know how to paint or learn how to paint, what advice do you have for us? Um, I'd say like anything or any experience with life, mm -hmm. at first you may see it as something that may be not somewhat difficult really, or it may, be, it may seem difficult for you. Mm -hmm. But you m must embrace it and take it slow and don't give up. Okay. You no, know? because it's going to get tough, especially when you like have a certain idea in your head and you can't execute it as well as you would like to. But, you know, just stick to it and practice every day if you have to, if time allows it, you know. Now, do you paint every day? Uh, yes. I've been painting every day for the past, um, yeah, 15 some years, really. And if I'm not painting, I'm doing uh, some, form of, some form of creation, you know, mm -hmm. either like I'm drawing, I'm coloring, or I'm planning for my next painting. <laughs> but, yeah, just like breathing to me now. Wow, I love that. It's like breathing. <laughs> and what kind of mediums do you use? Um, I use a lot of acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I'm also dabbing in oil as well. Like the, uh, I have this painting, uh, it's called New Egypt. It's about uh, Egypt, which is, I feel like, the Washington, D.C. of today. Yes. Well, Washington, D.C. today is like Egypt back then, is right. what I'm trying to say. Right. And, you know, even the monuments are similar to the pyramid and things of that nature. And we have a black president, which, you know, symbolized the, the pharaoh. Mm -hmm. 
right. to a certain extent, you know? I love that painting of President Obama. I think we're showing it on the screen now. Oh, yeah, it's right I there. I love that. So tell us about that. So uh, that painting was one of my first serious oil painting. And the face, I used oil paint to, to paint that. And um, painting it, it was, um, I kind of got some lashes for that, actually, because some people did not agree with the concept. And you know, people, they, uh, when they don't understand a certain thing, they kind of like shut it down or think it's bad or, you know, whatever the case may be, really, whatever their opinions are. Oh, now explain that. Mm. So um, that piece, when I was creating it, I felt, um, you know, I explained earlier, how today, especially Obama being the first black president of, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. country, it's a, it's a lot of representation. And I was looking back then how, you know, the pharaoh, is like Obama is like the pharaoh back then, you know, and people don't see that, especially like the position that it's in. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because in Egypt we had monuments, but I'm not sure, I forgot what it's called or what they called it even. But it seems to me, I was just, I forgot what I was doing, but I was just thinking about that. <laughs> and I just looked at it and I'm like, wow, the monument looked like. <laughs> It's like they transfer everything to Washington, D.C., really. Right. Or either that or Washington, D.C. kind of recreated it. Right. And uh, for people, um, if, you, if people want to go deep into Egyptian, uh, Egyptian teaching and philosophy and history, mm -hmm. that, that's exactly where Washington, D.C. and so many things uh, come from on this country are just pretty much representations of, of Egypt mm -hmm. and uh, things that were going on there. But that's, that's a whole different, that's a different subject. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could get lost in that time. <laughs> that's a dead different subject, but I love that. But where do your ideas come from when you decide to paint something? Um, I see myself as a messenger. Okay. And I mean simply a tool used to deliver a message compared to a I'd say a prophet in a sense. Now I'm not going as far as to call myself a prophet now, <laughs> but you know, if the shoe fit, you know. Right. But um, yeah, that's how I see myself really. I, I see myself as connecting to a source and that source of the divine consciousness. Mm -hmm. And whenever I would meditate or even dream sometime or, it's like similar to any artist really, we just get ideas out of nowhere and we don't know where it comes from or where it goes, similar to the wind. Right. Like, where does the wind come from? Right. And we just showed a picture of another piece that you had worked on. Tell us about that. Mm. I love that. The color is just explosive. Thank you. So this piece is called um, New Beginnings. And it's one of my most, um, probably one of my most uh, expensive and popular piece. It won first place at this art contest I had back in 2017 maybe. Okay, yeah. and tell us about other contests or awards or um, how do people find you so that they can say, you know, Drew, I want you to come to my gallery or mm. we want to honor you with an award for what you've been doing in the community? Well, people find me through Instagram. I'd say, the, I mean, word of mouth is one of my biggest um, ways of people find me really for I be I try to be as as many places as I can be. Mm -hmm. I usually do street art uh, gallery place downtown DC. And okay. um I also have a studio on 14th Street Northwest uptown DC as well. Okay. And people come through there as some traffic in there. And I have different art throughout the city, different vegan restaurants as well. So if you go to I'm not gonna say any vegan restaurants. I don't know every vegan restaurants in the city, mm -hmm. but most of them have my work in there, though. Interesting, interesting. And what pieces are shown? Um, s some of them are like raw pieces that I do for them, especially. Mm -hmm. um, there's this one spot in, on A Street called Kepa. Kepa's Raw Food and Juice Bar. It's also known as Hemp Burger as well. Okay. And I created a piece for, for him but for his restaurant, I was working on it because uh, my wife, she works there. Parts, well, used to, well, kind of. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, she works there, right? And she has, she had, they had a festival. And at the end of the piece, like, just 
based on a scenario that I faced or remembered, and I painted the piece, like at that festival, and then he just hung it up at his restaurant after that. Wow. Interesting. And I'm looking at the, the bottom. What's on the bottom? What are you showing on the bottom there? Right here? Yes. So there are going to be the different mushrooms and clock that I told you about earlier. Okay. That's what's about to go there. For example, I could add some of that right here. Where, you know, kind of like the white of the clock. What other colors are you going to use for this piece? Hmm. I'm going to use a darker blue, gray, and the earth tone, which is like all brown hues, really. You know, the sun's favorite color. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then with, um, and what will you use for the batteries? The, the batteries? I'm going to use some green, actually. Okay. I'm about to pour that into my palette right now. That's what I'm doing now. I'm pouring some green in there and some black. Whoops. That happened as well. Because uh, the, the, the woman would wear what color? Um, she's going to wear, she's going to be wearing black and like a dark blue on her bottom. Yeah, but painting takes is just so time consuming. Mm -hmm. Like a painting can take, well, my paintings, when I paint, I usually paint like you know, a few hours per day. And I could work on one piece per month, really, and still not finish it. Like this piece, you guys probably wouldn't see a finished piece today. Unless mm -hmm. I invite me back with the same piece. <laughs> <laughs> but how long does it take? Does it, you said it can take you months to finish? Yeah, one piece. It, it varies, you know, depending on what I got going on, how complex the piece is. I've had pieces that took me, thank you. I've had pieces that took me about um, a few days. Mm -hmm. I've had some that I finished in one day. And I've also had pieces that I took years to finish, actually. This is one piece that I'm working on, still working on today. Okay. And it's, um, it's took, it took me about maybe two years to, to get to where it's at right now. Two years? Mm-hmm. I'm so, still no, what, what, Okay, so uh, walk us through, what's the, the very starting, what's the start of the process? Hmm. Two years, that's a long time. It is. Okay, so yeah, kind of walk us through the whole process. So, when I know where I, where I want to take a piece, It takes me um, a shorter amount of time okay. to execute it. Let's say I, have, I draw a sketch of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I have an idea, now it's planned for. So that would probably take me about a week or less to execute that piece. But if I'm sitting down and I get an idea and I add it to a canvas, most of the time I don't know where I want to take it. So I'll just wait until I get inspired again and sometime I will create certain scenarios to like ignite some sort of inspiration, you know. Mm -hmm. but other time it's they are they come slower than other times, you know. So you just gotta go with the flow. Whenever you feel like painting on that piece particularly, you go ahead and paint. And you Interesting. Don't, just don't rush it. So you it. have different pieces. Just you could be working on several pieces at different times. Yeah, most definitely. You're just inspired by something happens and you're inspired and then you can go work on that mm -hmm. particular piece. And then you can leave it and then go work on. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of like rotate really. Um, it's like I'm always working on something different, about eight to nine different pieces actually. Yeah, and the thing is with the painting, you know, the, the, the two times that I've done it, uh, it's kind of tiring. Mm. <laughs> Why is that? It, it's fun, uh -huh. but it's, uh, you, you think that it doesn't take so much energy, but it really does take a lot of energy to do that. That's it's true. It's mental and physical. Exactly that. I've had time where, uh, cause I remember when I used to teach, and I would be a part-time teacher and a full-time artist, and at one point, the school had uh, commissioned me to paint the school walls and like add different images that are very inspiring for the youth. And 
I would come in early. I would normally start like in the afternoon to have my teaching classes, but then I would come in around like eight. And from eight to like one, I would paint the whole school, you know, just wherever I'm, I was you know, assigned to paint. And I would not have enough energy to like teach after that. Cause I was just so exhausted mentally. I'm like, oh, I don't even want to be here right now, you know? Mm -hmm. But I had to just, you know, brush it off and, and get to teaching. <laughs> And you had mentioned something earlier, which I wanted you to talk about. As an artist, and you said, you know, when you, we go to, we may go to different art shows or galleries, and you don't see a lot of representation of color, but mm -hmm. I, of people of color. Mm -hmm. But I read uh, on your website you had something for women mm. and people of color, and tell us about that. So, um, women, especially brown and black women. Mm -hmm. I try to paint them in certain light that you would normally see, like more so uh, in a goddess slash queen light, you know? Because mm -hmm. so, that's what women are really. They're like, they, they, without women, we wouldn't be here. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's so crazy. It's about Absolutely. Ken. It's crazy to see how wildly they're oppressed right now. And back then, too, you know, it just hap it happens all the time. I know. And tell us about the piece that we're showing now, that we're seeing now. That kind of, uh, that's a lot of power with mm. this piece that we're showing on the screen now. Oh, that tell piece us about right there? That. That's called, uh, I named that piece Released. And within that piece, you see a young man releasing the different type of tensions within him and letting go. And I feel like that's the best way, you could, that's the best rebuttal you could have, really, is to just let go and forgive, you know? Despite the time that has passed, despite the, the shackles, despite the desires, because that's why I have the heart there, and he's enchanted his heart, because most of us, we're enchanted to our desires. Mm -hmm. And if we want something, or we, just, we crave something so bad, we probably wouldn't do anything else until we get what we're craving, you know? Sometimes the things that we want can, it may not be drugs, it don't have to be drugs, but it can be a drug to us. Mm -hmm. And we can find ourselves addict, addicts, you know what I mean? Right. And it's, yeah. Would you describe your work as, um, well, I, guess I would say that you're very conscious and very um, mindful mm. of your images. It's like, like tell us about this. Hmm. That piece is, um, it's called Stolen from D.C. And at one point in D.C. last year, there was a movement going on called the Dump You D.C. It is still going on right now. And what they were trying to do was, there was this Google spot. More, it was a Metro uh, CPS uh, store. And they used to play loud music outside the store. But there, it was some, some sort of a ritual. They've been doing it for years. It would play Google oh, music. Oh, I remember that. OK. And the developers from the town, when you know, they was trying to you know, uh, gentrify the town, they would, uh, they told the store, you know, you got to turn music down, or you know, it's getting shut down, something like that. And, and the people of the town were not, you know, they didn't want to stand for it. Right. So we marched. And it's funny, because we had a petition and over we were aiming for like about 15,000 signs, but over like 100,000 people signed it and donated money. Like I had texted to my mom and she's like, yeah, I just sent $30. I'm like, wow, really? Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't think people cared, but you know, it was, it, was, it was dope. I think I remember that. And, um, and now the, the music can, it's okay now. Yeah, it's right? still you standing. Can, you can yeah. still stand or they can still play the music mm -hmm. maybe for certain hours now. Or it seems like something had changed. I'm not too sure, but that would make sense for them to have some sort of compromise, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too, too familiar. Interesting. So those are that kind of energy. There's just something that happens, and you put it on canvas. Um, with, the, with the painting? Just something in your spirit that just says, I need to create yeah. what I've seen, or oh, I need to create what's happening now. In it's like an urge you, you suddenly get, you know? It's like you cannot fight it or resist. And you could be doing, I could be sleeping. It could be like three or four in the morning. And I just get the urge to create. And it could be something that I've never seen before, something that I've never really experienced before. Wow. And I, I need to 
write this down. You know, by writing, I mean paint it and put it on canvas, and that's like my form of writing, really. And you really can't wow. fight it. Like, you gotta just drop everything and just do that, and then you could resume to your regular day life, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it, you, have, you have to create it. And yeah. It's, yeah, people say, you know, things that you want to do the most, the things that are just the most important to you, you just do just to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Even if you didn't get paid to do it, you just do it. That's true. Because yeah, it, do feeds, it. Your, uh, feeds your soul. Mm -hmm. And it feels like if you're not doing that, you're just like you're missing a huge part of your life. It's like something is missing, you know? And that's people's purposes. Everybody has something like that. It's just got to tap into it and kind of like realize, all right, this is, this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. It's like you need to do that. You know, we've had you know, certain news reporters where they have to you know, write about that particular story or right. they don't feel right. They can't even sleep at night, you know, right. regardless of what people miss. So now this is not a good story to write. They feel like it's, it's a must, it's a need, you know. So that's how I really feel about creating. And I love that you say, you know, it's all about creating. Mm. Yeah. That that's what, that's what feeds the soul. Exactly. Wow, and just this little that you have done here, I'm like, wow. Mm. It Thank already you. has form. Mm-hmm. It, it's amazing, it's amazing. What uh, would you tell a young person, mm -hmm. or even a senior, hmm. about painting. I tell them, hey man, just to just do it. Yeah, just like the Nike logo or slogan. Just, yeah, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really what you need to do, though. You know, I when I started, I had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. I was literally, you know, a, a kid. Wow. I just picked it up. And Drew, and we're, we're going to talk some more, but tell folks how they can contact you and uh, reach out to you. Yes, you could uh, find my Instagram. It is D3WWorld. I'm also on Facebook, D3WWorld. I'm Twitter, D3WWorld. Um, my website is do.world. It's not .com, though. Just do.world. Um, yeah, I'm, I have a studio on 14th Street Northwest, but if you go on my website, you should, you should see the right address, and um, you find me. I'm also having a show on the 23rd. Okay. Give me, it's February the 23rd. It's at the Anacostia um, We Act Radio. Okay, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.